Centuries ago, this venue hosted gladiators and chariot races, entertaining audiences of up to 35,000 people. It's one of the biggest amphitheaters in the world, and it's come alive with the sound of symphonic orchestras from around the globe. I'm so happy to be in El Jam for this concert. There are about 18 of us here. The theater is full, and that's a good sign. I hope there'll be more shows like this one. Sorry, I here and I went to to see this kind of festival a month ago, but it was very impressed to me. So that's why I came here again to see the concert, and I really expect I'm really expecting for today's festival and classical music, and also I'm so interested in the history between Roman and Carthage. The El Jam Amphitheater dates back to the 3rd century, when the city was prospering from the manufacture and export of olive oil. Its construction was seen as an act of defiance against the Roman Empire, showcasing the wealth and skills of the local population. El Jam's architecture is innovative and solves several problems experienced in the design of previous amphitheaters. The Tunisian Symphonic Orchestra has always been part of this festival. Naturally, such an enormous space enhances symphonies. Playing here is not the same as playing in a closed theater. This year, the music is accompanied by a fashion show featuring traditional Tunisian styles, resulting in a combination of different eras and art forms in a truly unique space. It's a big honor and responsibility to showcase my designs at such a famous venue alongside some of the best symphonic orchestras in the world. The rivalry between Al Jam and the ancient city of Rome grew when the population revolted against the empire, prompting Rome to send its army to destroy the city. But the amphitheater survived and has become a space that brings different cultures together to celebrate their heritage. Yusuf Geji, CCTV, El Jam, Tunisia.